Hi everyone. I wanted to share a few words about compassion and creating a sense of safety. So we've said many times that compassion is the foundation of yoga and actually the main practice, the root practice of yoga is learning to practice compassion. And it's often easy to see outside of ourselves so we can see all these external rota um, relationships, being compassionate to the different people in our lives, to our pets, to animals, to you know all the outer beings. And during this time, um, from my own practice, my own experience is that the one that I need to practice to the most, compa practice compassion towards the most, is um, this whole environment within my body. So for many of us over the last 10 months or so, the things that normally, the external things that create a sense of safety for us, you know, our work, our community, <laughs> being around friends and family, and many other things that help us to feel safe have been removed. And there are many people that have been experiencing a lot of anxiety, myself included. And as I reflect and look at this, I've realized that the main thing I can do now to create a sense of safety, I have no control. Anything that's beyond my body, all these outer conditions, there's nothing I can do to change them or control them. But where I do have um, you know, the opportunity to make some shifts and help myself feel safer and better is within my own mind. So whatever we're thinking, whatever we're believing, that is creating the environment that all of our cells are bathing in, that our inner child is bathing in. And I've become really aware that when I am feeling the least safe, when I have the greatest sense of anxiety in my body, if I get really still and tune in and become aware, okay, what am I thinking right now? What am I believing? It's always scary thoughts, <laughs> right? So all these scary thoughts create an environment within the body. This is the planet inside of here, you know, all of these different cells create an environment that feels unsafe and the opportunity, we can't change our thoughts. Our thoughts are just coming from conditions, okay? So there's a certain experience we have, a thought pops up. They're, they're continually coming, but what we can do is question them. So if we don't question our thoughts, that's when they have power. We just blindly believe them and that sets the hormones that are moving through our body that creates the state that we're living in. And if we want to create a sense of safety within our body, what we need to do is become aware of these thoughts, question them. So I shared a little bit about how to question them uh, in the last video with the work of Byron Katie, and then start to see the opposite of them is true and spend some time doing things that create a different chemistry within the body. So if you have, you know, a pet, you can often feel when you're holding your pet or if you have a child that you love when you're hugging them, you can feel the state of the body changes. You can feel the love hormones moving through your body. So finding ways to do that so that we're creating an environment of safety within us. And then we can navigate, okay, everything is uncertain beyond, but the compassion is moving closer and closer and closer inside. It becomes more and more subtle then we become stronger. So that's one aspect of it, okay? Becoming aware of what we're thinking and questioning the thoughts so that we don't believe them. Every single thought that goes through our mind, um, you can likely find evidence that the opposite of it is also true. So whatever you're believing, you can find some evidence for that and then if you turn it around, and see if you can find some evidence for the opposite, you'll usually be surprised and realize that the opposite is as true as what you were thinking. So learning to take that practice on and becoming aware also when your body feels anxiety, okay, I'm thinking or believing something that's creating a toxic environment in here. The goal of yoga, the first practice of yoga is compassion. What is my work right now? What can I do? to either soothe this environment <laughs> or to shift it to something else. And then the last piece that I wanted to talk about is prayer. So, you know, when I was a kid, 
I used to say prayers and my prayers were always, you know, with a family friend who was um, diagnosed with cancer, my prayers every night would be, please make him better, please make him better, right? And normally the, the younger prayers we have are from the, the inner child, from the more scared aspect of ourself, is change these outer conditions, please make this go away, please make things go back to the way they were. And the invitation actually is to realize we can't change the outer conditions, but instead to ask for the courage. So please give me the courage to navigate this or show me how I can feel brave during this. Show me how I can feel safe during this. You know, give me strength, give me courage so that we're not asking for any of the circumstances to change because behind that saying, I need these circumstances to change. There's a bit of a belief that I can't handle this. I can't cope with this, it's too much for me. So instantly, that's fear, that's gonna send shh, you know, all of these waves of stress through the body. So instead, we're asking for courage. Give me courage, give me faith, give me hope to navigate this. Let me know that I actually can. I can go through this, that I am strong enough to go through this. And this is really the practice of compassion so that the inner child, the part of us that feels scared, it can see, oh, hey, there's an adult that lives in this house too that's doing its part to nurture me and take care of me and notice when I'm spinning out of control, okay? So those are two things that um, I offer. They're from my own practice. I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm just sharing what I'm learning but realizing, oh, okay, whenever there's anxiety here, how can I nurture? How can I um, offer love and compassion into this environment? And then how can I use some wisdom in the higher mind to, to take care of this and to, to let it know, hey, you're strong enough to get through this. I believe in you. You can handle this. All of this so that it doesn't feel weak and not enough and then constantly suffering, suffering, suffering. I hope that's useful for you. I would love to hear any comments you have and I hope you have a beautiful day. Namaste.